So in this video, we're going to cover how to model data using random variables. Now, let's pretend that we have some data that we collected. You were standing over the bridge over that, that, that runs across a highway, and you had a radar gun. And with your radar gun, you were taking measurements of every car that went by. And when you did this, you got a whole bunch of data and numbers as a result of this. And what you did is you then took all of your data, sorted it, and you plotted them based on how often you would see those numbers. So if on the x-axis, we have speed of the car that was measured. And on the y-axis, we have count, right? how many cars we saw of that speed. Then let's say that the distribution looked like this, where these green dots represent the peaks of each of these binned, datas, uh, binned data points. We can do some properties and map this and say, OK, this value here is going to be 60. It is a highway after all. That's the average speed, let's say. It's, well, we don't know if it's the average, but it is definitely the highest, the most common speed was 60. And let's say over here was, for the sake of argument, 80. And over here, now let's not put it there. Let's move it just a little bit more. Let's put that over here at 80, and let's put this over here at 40. And let's just pretend that these two are about the same. They're not the same right here, but we can fix that. All right. Now, all you have so far is data. Now, I'm not saying anything else about this, but what if you wanted to model this data that you've collected using a random variable, using something that could help explain what this data looks like. Well, I drew this very specifically to look like something that's close to normal. It's not exactly a normal distribution, but it's pretty close. And so what you could say is that you're going to model the data that you collected with the radar gun as a random variable s that follows, this little squiggly line represents the, the, the term follows, a normal distribution with mean, mu, and sigma that is equal to, and now we'll actually put those variables in, a mu of 60, mean of 60, and a standard deviation of 10. Right? These points represented two standard deviations out. And what you can then do now that you've done this is look at the properties of the distribution now that you're of this normal distribution that you are asserting just by inspection looks something like this. And it's a good model. It's a good estimate for your data. It's very hard to make any sense of what your data is telling you. But once you model it with this normal distribution, you can then make conduct analysis on the properties of this normal distribution that we know about, that if it resembles the data, then the conclusions here can be valid. That's what it means to model data using a random variable. Let's look at an alternative. We could, for example, choose to model this via a different random variable. Let's say we're going to model it with S prime as a different random variable. And instead of using the normal distribution, we're going to use the uniform distribution between the ranges of 30 and 90. And so if we were to plot what this distribution looks like, right, if this is 30 and this is 90, what this distribution looks like is something like this. Right? It's flat between the regions of 30 and 90 and zero everywhere else. 
Now you can just look at this and tell that this is not a very good model for your data. This normal distribution is a better model for your data. That doesn't prevent someone from modeling their data using the uniform distribution and making conclusions based on that. But what you would have here is the case of model mismatch, where the model that you're using, if in the case of the uniform, doesn't well match the data and thus any conclusions you draw based on this aren't valid. Said another way, if you were to ask for the expected value of S in both cases, you'd actually get the same thing. The expected value of the normal distribution is 60 and the expected value of the uniform distribution between 30 and 90 is also 60. So in one sense, both of these, dist both of these models do accurately describe, both these distribute these, these, uh, these models of, of distributions do model our data well, at least with respect to the average value, mu. But where things start to break down is if we were to look at, say, if we were to say, look at the variance of these two, they would be different. And the variance of this is much more close, is much more close to the variance of the actual data set than the variance of the uniform distribution. Similarly, if we were to try bootstrapping, where we took random samples from this distribution and random samples of this distribution to see if we could recreate our, our population that we got from our data, this one would do a lot better at recreating that, that process than this one would. And so in this situation where our data looks like this, the normal distribution is a better model, better random variable to use than the uniform distribution as prime. Getting the right model to make sense of the data that you've collected is oftentimes the biggest challenge. In many cases, this is a very clean example, but in many cases, no distributions, no clean distributions exist that model your data well at all. In which case, you have to make lots of assumptions and caveats about whether or not the modeling, the conclusions you're drawing from the model actually apply to the data itself.